Today on Eric's Tech Talks, we're going to take you through your first NMEA network installation. This would include something like our better connected kits for your specific outboard and your specific fish finder. Let's talk a little bit about wiring. So inside any boat are conduits or cable paths that were designed to take the factory cables from wherever they were originally installed to things like your dashboard or to your helm or to the additional entertainment equipment or whatever you've got in your boat. So you can generally find conduits or you can find cable routing paths and it's good to have a look inside your boat at the existing wiring to get some ideas as to where you should run the NMEA cables. To start with, you have one engine cable, you've got a number of T's, you've got a longer 10 foot cable that we call our backbone cable and a power lead. Let's take a look at where they should be going. Start with the 10 foot cable in your kit. You need to run it from within a couple of feet of your outboard motor inside your stern and the other end should be within a couple of feet of your fish finder, whether your fish finder is at your helm or center helm or console or whatever. And the reason that you put the two ends there is because those are expansion points. At a future date, you can add other cables to go to your trolling motor at your bow, or you can include uh, fuel monitoring or any number of NMEA accessories. These are the cables that should be at your stern location. This is our 10 foot backbone cable that runs between the stern and the helm. You have one T, you have your outboard engine cable, and you have your terminator. Keep in mind that your backbone cable doesn't really care which way it is oriented because the T's and terminators come in two different genders and all of that is covered off. So you don't have to worry about which direction this cable goes. The second cable is your engine cable. It will run from the first T that you've installed at the end of your 10 foot cable in your stern inside the engine. Let's talk a little bit about the bundle for the cable. Every outboard motor has a big grommet that is designed to be taken apart and for additional cables to be included. It will either have punch out slots or places where you can drill a hole and will still provide um, a captive cable location so that the weather stays out of your outboard motor. If you take the cowling off your engine, what you'll see is you'll see at least one, possibly two nuts that hold this clamp on top of the grommet. So once you remove that, you can take that metal part that's on the top of the grommet out and easily run the cable through this uh, split grommet and then run it either through your hose that's here for all of your cables or you can use cable ties to keep everything nice and neat when you add the additional NMEA cable. Okay, at this point, you've got your outboard motor cable installed. It's running through the bundle that comes into your stern, and there's a T at that location. At that T, you want to put your first terminator, and then the 10-foot cable now runs to underneath your fish finder. So at the helm end of your 10-foot cable, you've got your T, the cable that goes to your fish finder, your power cable, and the power leads go to either your ACC connection or to your fuse box, and then your other terminator. That's it. For the helm, once again, your backbone cable is going to already be there because that's what you installed first. That goes either into the T that goes to your fish finder or it can go into your power cable. The order of these doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter in any NMEA network. So as you continue to add things on, uh, NMEA 2000 is what's called a bus. So everybody talks and uh, the order is not important. The fish finder cable varies quite a bit. It's important that you look at our website and order the right kit. And if you're ordering just a fish finder cable, there's lots of information there as to which model you should order for your particular brand and model of fish finder. The power leads come in two different flavors. There's a fused and an unfused version. The reason that you would order one versus the other is if you are connecting directly into your boat's ACC or accessory circuit, 
then you probably want the fused one, and that's what most of our customers order. The unfused one is for people that have a fuse block inside the helm of their boat that has a spare circuit available, and they want to use that to keep their wiring a little neater. And that's the reason that they would order the unfused version, and we sell both on all of our kits. Last but not least is our other terminator, and if you look really closely you'll notice that this one looks slightly different than the one that was in our stern diagram. The reason for that is, is again, it doesn't really matter which way you orient our backbone cable. All of the other components take care of this, and the terminator will just change depending on how things are oriented, but it doesn't matter which end goes to which for your backbone cable again. Now that you've got the cables installed and everything powered up, you should be able to see things like engine hours and uh, RPM pretty easily. If you don't see these right off the bat, then you want to go into your fish finder settings and make sure that it knows that your NMEA port is active and that you have it configured for the right engine. To get things like oil pressure and engine temperature, sometimes you may have to go through your fish finder's manual and look at the various menus to get those items to display. That's our basic lesson in connecting your outboard motor to your fish finder using NMEA networking. If you'd like to learn more, click the subscribe button below and come see us at goldenchannels.com.